OK, so now we're going to start modeling using uh, logistic regression here. So let's create a new section header, call it modeling logistic regression. And um, what is logistic regression? Let's, let's Google it really quickly. Logistic regression. So this is definitely something that if you want to learn more about the math that goes underneath this and how exactly it works, you know, this is a great thing to dig into on your own. Um, it's not too complicated, but, you know, the first time that you see these kinds of models, uh, it's, it definitely can be a steep learning curve. Um, but at a very high level here, without really getting into the math, logistic regression it's going to be this, this nice squiggly function here. It's called a sigmoid function. And it's just a way of taking any numeric input. So along the, the x-axis here, you can have anything from negative infinity to infinity. So you take any real number, any, any x input, and you map it to some value between 0 and 1. And essentially what this function does is it maps out, OK, uh, what's the probability of this data point belonging to one class versus another class? And so um, and so what you'll have, you know, that's why you have kind of the separation here of, you know, half of this logistic regression down here towards one half of the regression up here or sorry, half towards zero, half towards one. So we're, we're finding a way, let's see if we can find, uh, find one that shows you here. So like this graph here. So you see how the logistic regression is down here at zero for, kind of, for this set of data points. And it, it says essentially that the probability of a data point belonging to this class, this bottom class here, is very strong up until some kind of middling point where these two classes start getting a little fuzzy. So you might think about this in terms of, um, you know, this this point right here where the Versicolor and the Virginica classes start getting a little overlap. So over here, we're pretty confident this is Versicolor. You know, that, that seems pretty clear to us. Over here, we're pretty confident that's Virginica. That's pretty clear to us. But in here, the, it gets, uh, gets a little messy. So maybe the probability of these orange points, you know, maybe the probability of this being orange is close to one over here. And then we drop down and we're saying, you know, okay, in this middle point here, this is more of a 50, 50 toss up. So this is going to be like a probability of 50%. And if we go just a little bit this way, well, maybe now it's a probability of, of 75% or 80% that it's orange. And you kind of flip that and, and do the same thing as you head towards green. Now that's exactly what this, logistic regression or this this sigmoid function is doing here is determining a probability based on that that input so the math does get a little bit trickier whenever you've got more than two classes so in this case we have three classes so it's not going to be exactly the same but that's basically what's that's basically what's going on here is is a logistic regression takes in your input data and then spits out a probability of uh, it being one class versus another class. So let's just see how this works in practice. Um, so first things first is we are going to import. So we can say from sklearn. This is under the linear model uh, sub package, I believe, or sub module. We can import logistic regression. And let's just look at the documentation here really quickly. So I'll put a question mark after and hit shift enter. So this tells us all of the different parameters that the logistic regression class accepts. So and, it, and notice that it, it has defaults for all of these. So we can actually, we can just do this. We can just do model equals logistic regression, open and close to instantiate the, the a new a new instance of this class here, um, and it will set all of these defaults for us. But if we do want to go tinkering with things, uh, we can 
go tinkering with these parameters, and that will give us different results. So doc string, so logistic regression is also known as a logit or a max int classifier. Um, okay, so here is the multi-class case actually that I was just talking about. So it looks like the training algorithm uses the one versus rest scheme if the multi-class option is set to OBR and uses the cross entropy loss if it's set to multinomial. So what's the default here? Default uh, multi-class is auto. So um, it looks like it might depend on which, which optimizer we solve here. But either way, this is part of kind of that underlying math that you can dig into if you want, but you don't have to right now. So you can just know that to start with, these parameters do have good defaults. And then if you if you go down here, you know, all the all the parameters are described more in depth. Like um, yeah, you can see what each one of these things does. And then at some point it should also give us, yep, so here are the attributes of our model. So these are the things that we can get from it. And uh, here's an example. So here is basically kind of what we're we're going to be doing. Um, but I will go ahead and close this out and we can just go ahead and get to doing it. So I'll go ahead and start by instantiating a logistic regression model. And now one thing that we might think to do is we might just think to do model.fit x train y train. So model.fit takes in our data and fits this model and then we've got a model dot um, we have a model dot score method here and what does this do well this gives us the mean accuracy on a given test data and labels and we might think okay well I'll just I'll fit it on my training data and then let's go ahead and score it on my training data and this is not best practice so this is not what you want to do so we get a 99% accuracy but the crucial mistake that we're making here is that we are evaluating our model on the same data that we trained it with. And by the way, that is all that it, that is all that it takes to fit and, and score a model using scikit-learn. You just fit it with your data and then you score it with, with some data. Um, so it's, it's very, very simple. There's a lot of, there's a lot of additional stuff that you can do here under the hood if you know what these parameters do. But to get started, you know, very, very simple. So, but the, the fatal flaw that we made here is you never want to evaluate, so I'll put it here, you never want to evaluate your model on the same data that was used for training. So there are two, there are um, two main approaches for getting around this. And I'll say that one of them is definitely the most common these days, but we'll start we'll start maybe with the less common one. So um, we'll start with let's let's say here uh, using a validation set to evaluate our model. So what an what a validation set is is it's basically like our test set that we split off, let's go up here. Where do we split off our test set? Let's see here, I believe it might've been, yep, right here, train test split. So I'll actually add a note here is that you always want to evaluate your final model on a test set that hasn't been used at all in training process. So we'll split off a test set here. And then I'll add a little caveat here, which is that you know, notes. Um, this might be a little less true if you use cross validation, but is still considered a best practice. So, and we actually are going to use cross-validation. This is going to be the thing that I suggest that we use, um, but we'll get to that in just a second. So the first way that we're going to evaluate our model on different data than we use to train it 
is we're going to create a validation set. And so we're going to split off a separate segment of our training data. We already split off a test set, but we're leaving that for the very, very, very end after we've done all of our training. Um, we're going to split off another little chunk right now, a validation set that we can use to uh, see how our model does in the meantime. So let's do xt, xv, yt, yv equals, we'll do another train test split of x train and y train. And we'll say our test size equals 0 0.25. Now let's look at how much data this leaves us with. All right, so it looks like we have 84 data points for training and 28 for validation. Um, since we are dealing with such a small data set here, we are starting to get kind of you know dangerously low as far as the number of data points that we have to work with. Uh, but that's okay for right now. So now what we would do is we fit our model using our X, and I'll, I'll say up here, by the way, let's make a comment, which is um, XT stands for X train and XV stands for X validation. So this is our training data here and our validation data. So what we're going to do is we, we fit our model on our training data. So we'll fit it on our training data. And now we called model.fit. And now our model uh, is a trained logistic regression model. And we can use this to make predictions on new data points. So that's exactly what we're going to do here, I'll actually show you before we use this this shortcut model.score method. Let's do uh, let's do model dot predict, and we'll do model dot predict. Let's do x v. And so here you go, just like before, just like our function that we used up above to do manual predictions. Now our logistic regression model is spitting out predictions for what it thinks these flowers are. So we can say y pred, we'll do y pred for prediction. And now just as before, we have our y pred, we have our y validation. So let's do y pred equals y validation. This gives us a series of trues and falses. We'll do np.mean to get our training accuracy once before. And look at this, 96.4%. So this is now doing better than our manual model accuracy. And if you'll also notice, this is a very key thing here. Whenever we, whenever we train our model, whenever we fit our model on data um, and then evaluate it on unseen data, we're going to get a lower accuracy than we would get if we fit and evaluate on the same data. And that's kind of exactly the point, is that if we're using the same exact data to both fit our model and evaluate, well, then there's no reason why we couldn't just create, why we couldn't get a perfect score. You know, let's look at, let's look at some of our, let's look at our, uh, some of our training data here. So for example, if we're using the same exact data to both train our model and evaluate, then there's no reason why we couldn't essentially write, I'm going to call this a um, very overfit uh, model. And overfit, by the way, means exact, it's kind of the bad thing that we're, that we're showing here. So we'll, we'll pass in. Uh, we'll pass in a row of data. We could just say if our row of data equals this, equals this NumPy array, then we return what the label is. So you know we're not we're not learning any patterns at all. We're literally just memorizing rows of data one at a time. Then we could go to the next one. We could say x train one and y train one. And, you know, okay, here let's 
let's do this again. You know, elif row equals numpy dot array this return zero. And then we just do that for every single row of data. And we we've just memorized our data. You know, we haven't learned anything. This isn't a good model that's going to generalize to new data in the future because we're never going to see this exact data set again. Or, you know, in this case we might, but usually we're not going to see that. And and that's not what we want to do. We want to learn something that's generalizable. So this is why we do not evaluate our model on the same data that was used to train it. And that's why you'll see that this is 99% accurate, while this is only 96% accurate, is because this is more or less just memorizing um, some of the data points here. So let's go ahead and delete this. All right, so, so there we go. We, we have our first model accuracy from our logistic regression. That's pretty cool. And I'll show you really quick that just as a shortcut, what we did before, you can pass your validation data, your X validation and your Y um, validation directly into this model.score method. And it will do this calculation for you, this np.mean, you know, Y pred equals, equals Y validation. So this is just a shortcut that allows you to do that. One quick note, by the way, before we move on to cross-validation, uh, which is basically another way to do this whole train-test split thing, um, we are getting this convergence warning. Uh, so it looks like our, our optimizer, our solvers, has failed to converge. Total number of iterations reached. So this is kind of regarding the underlying math of what's going on here. But it, you know, helpfully, uh, it gives us a suggestion for what to do about it. So increase the number of iterations, uh, max iter or scale the data. So we can just do that here. Let's let's just put in max iter, and this is one of the parameters to this model. And um, actually, let's see what the first of all oops, looks like. I turned on line numbers using L, I think. Let's see. There we go. Shift L turns that back off. All right, so let's do, uh, let's look at the parameters here again. So max iter is currently set to 100. What if we set this to 200? Let's just see what happens there. If we increase the number of iterations that our model goes through to try to find the best, the best model. So we've already created this train test split, so that's fine. Um, let's fit our model again. And you'll see that that does actually get rid of that warning. So it looks like our model did converge with 200 iterations rather than one. Uh, and let's see, let's actually see if this does anything for our accuracy. Uh, no, actually does not look like it does anything for our accuracy here. So it looks like the, the iterations didn't really hurt us, but you know, we can turn that warning off. So 